This is what a full collection of Nintendo Power Magazines looks like, except for one issue that I'm missing. Randomly issue 198 is the last issue I needed. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. This is a big moment for me because I've been after every single issue of Nintendo Power for almost seven or eight years. It's been a long time. This is a series that I did not grow up with, but a lot of my friends did, and I was really jealous because I felt like they literally had the power of video games. In the very first issue of Nintendo Power, there was the Konami code. The first issue is modeled after the last issue, and it's been really fun to get all 285 issues. So here with me right now, let's put this last issue in its place. This is issue 197, that's issue 199. So issue 198 featuring Fire Emblem on on the cover goes into its home finally. This is such a cool experience finishing off a collection and now I can actually go through all the magazines, start reading them more thoroughly and I might even make a video for every single issue if I can get enough material and if you guys are interested. I especially want to make a video I think for the first issue and probably for the last issue as well. So there are 285 issues, but there are actually some magazines that kind of predate Nintendo Power Magazine. They're called Nintendo Fun News. Those ones were given away for free, and eventually Nintendo canceled that program and decided to focus on just the Nintendo Power Magazine. Fun fact, the magazine actually had a overall editor that was a female that did not want anyone's photo of someone who was making the magazine in the magazine itself because it was supposed to be about you the gamer yourself so there's so much that you can learn from reading a nintendo power magazine almost any issue if you pick it up randomly you're going to have a good time reading it so the very beginning of all of this starts down here so right here is issue number one. You can get some protective sleeves for stuff like this. And issue number one is really old. So mine is not in mint condition. I do obviously want to update the condition of this. So the very first issue is actually from the year I was born, July slash August, 1988. On this, we have the Super Mario Bros. 2 cover, and this one actually features Wart right there, so that is not Bowser. And Mario's in a suit that looks kind of weird, it looks backwards. Normally, Mario's suit is red, but here he's in blue, and this obviously features the game for Super Mario Bros. 2, and mentions the second quest, which wasn't even released yet, it was coming soon, which is insane. So this first issue, I do have in a protective kind of sleeve, to try and keep these a little bit better over time. Now, a quick tip, or just a note, I guess, you can use these sleeves, obviously. I would love to get one probably for every single issue, but just as a heads up, apparently protective sleeves like this and protective cases on your video games themselves, if you are in an environment that is, you know, full of moisture, so my collection is in a basement, it's not always the best idea to put your games in boxes. If there's a lot of moisture, once moisture gets in, it never gets out. So just be really aware of that. I have down here a dehumidifier to kind of keep track of the humidity down here, and I would actually like to get a more consistent temperature gauge and humidity gauge so I can keep track of that. But if you do want to put these in baggies, it will keep it more protected. You just need to make sure that you're being really careful, obviously, with the moisture level wherever you are. So that's the first issue of Nintendo Power, and next I just want to just move all the way to the final issue of Nintendo Power, which had some really cool inserts as well. So here is the final issue of Nintendo Power, we'll compare it to the other one in a moment, but you see Bowser here now, on the side, and you do see Mario, of course, wearing the right blue overalls with red. Looking more classic, jumping on a Goomba, you get a poster inside. Most of the issues have a poster for Nintendo Power magazines, but not all of them. So in general, for me, what in my experience, is roughly around issue 20, they started getting some really good posters, but then late 100s, they stopped having posters in most of the issues of Nintendo Power, and the magazines might have got just a little bit thinner from then on. So this is the final issue. This is issue 285. You can get two different variations of the issue. So this is a subscriber issue that someone would actually, you know, be subscribed to Nintendo Power, and they would be sent these in the mail once a month, or you could go into a store and buy the magazine at a corner store, maybe at something like, well, I guess anywhere that actually just sells any sort of magazines or books. 
With the final issue, there were a few really cool inserts that came with it that I just want to mention. So first of all, there's this Nintendo Power final issue, thank you and farewell. So this goes through how this is the final issue you, that you hold in your hands. We began in summer 1988. No one knew how long the magazine would run or how much of an impact it would have on video game culture. We have been honored and humbled by all the fond memories our fans have shared since we announced that Nintendo Power was closing. On behalf of everyone who has worked on the magazine, past and present, we were proud to serve you, the Nintendo Power readers, for more than 24 years. And now, as we say goodbye, may your best scores, or may your scores, blast to cosmic levels, and your powers be as great as Super Mario's. Thank you for being a subscriber, and so forth. You also got this right here, which was to our readers. This is also, you know, covered in some plastic and it does have some blue kind of of that. I put up this up as a poster on my wall at some point, but at least, you know, it's protected. And this is a little note to our readers. It says right here, this is from Reggie fils which is so cool. He was the Nintendo of America president at some point. Now there is Bowser. His name's literally Bowser, and he's the president of Nintendo for North America. That's crazy. And Chris Slate, who was the editor-in-chief and a longtime Nintendo fan right here, of course, it says. So if you buy the final issue of Nintendo Power, try to make sure that you're getting these inserts along with them. Here's a side-by-side -side of the first issue of Nintendo Power and the last issue of Nintendo Power to get that comparison. They really nailed it trying to model New Super Mario Bros. U of all games to Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, to me, there's a few things going on here. Obviously, we have Wart versus Bowser. We have some sort of old-school Mario from Mario 2 to New School Mario. But not only that, we're jumping on a real mushroom, because clearly in Super Mario Bros. 2, there were actual mushrooms that you could pull from the ground and everything. He's holding a carrot. And then here we have him stomping on Goombas. Not only that, but we have this that is 3D, looks like claymation style. But not only is this claymation style, but you still have the background, which was added into a lot more games later on. There were backgrounds in Mario 2, just not like Super Mario Bros. U. In addition to that, it's really cool, in my opinion, how both of these games, people don't usually immediately associate with Mario. Normally, people think of the first Mario game, or Mario 3, or Mario World, maybe Mario 64, maybe Mario Galaxy, but most people probably aren't going to say Super Mario Bros. 2, or New Super Mario Bros. U. So the first issue and the last issue kind of have that same bookends about them. They're kind of weird, quirky games from Nintendo. I do like how they added the flagpole, because that's a really nice touch. We kind of got to the end of Nintendo Power, and it's the end of the entire series. Series, so you reach the flagpole. So that's a really nice touch. Just looking at the back of these two issues, the first issue just said, choose your next challenge from the most powerful library in the universe, showing so many different games on the NES. And then look at the back of the last issue that I have. It's for tanks, tanks, tanks. That is hilarious to me that it is just such a change, basically. Here is all of our wonderful games, and for the last issue of this, it seems like they kind of sold out and put Tanks, Tanks, Tanks on there. Nothing against Tanks, Tanks, Tanks. It's a fine game, but it's nothing like, hey, here's all of our amazing games, and then they decided to do this for the last issue of Nintendo Power. Just kind of hilarious. Going into more detail with that numbering convention, originally when they started Nintendo Power, it wasn't released every month, it was actually every two months. So the first issue is called July-August 1988. The second issue is September-October 1988. Then we have November-December, then January-February 1989, March-April, May-June, July-August, September-October, November-December, January-February 1990, then March, April, May, June, and then randomly, issue number 13 here is a guide. So it says NP13 right here. It's a guide for Super Mario Bros. 3. It was that important that it had to have a guide, and they stopped the production of the other ones. Then they went back to July, August 1990, and then they just started numbering them now forever. So this is issue number 15, it says there at the top, but again, it's a guide for Ninja Gaiden right here. Then you have 
volume 16. Then you have a guide over here for Final Fantasy at 17, a normal issue at 18, and then a guide for four player extra, and then volume 20, and then they just continued in the 20s after that. And there were no more guides as part of the normal main series from my understanding. So that's how the naming convention kind of started. Started with months every two months, eventually went into guides, and then just started the numbering. And the numbering started at 13 right here, but then it went back to the months and then went back to the numbers for issue number 15. Just kind of re weird and strange and interesting, but it's cool how it lasted all 285 issues. Going over some of the posters and what they would look like from Nintendo Power Magazine, when you buy an issue, you're hoping it does come with the poster still attached. So when you scroll through it, you'll eventually get to a point in the magazine where you feel like it's a little bit thicker, and there's a three-page poster pullout. This is one of my favorites right here, Secret of Mana. I have one of them up in my Nintendo room right over there, as well as several other Nintendo Power posters throughout the space. So here it is right here. In order to get them out, you have to be really careful. The best way I found is to either use an X-Acto knife or to actually remove Remove the staples and then put them back or at least put the staples pry them up and then get it out but probably an exacto knife but you might damage the magazine and you will certainly decrease its value next up we have Mega Man X if you're wondering what issues of Nintendo Power have posters, I'll try and put a link in the description below the video to a really useful resource that'll tell you all the inserts in each issue of Nintendo Power Magazine. So you can maybe hunt down a specific issue, see if it has the inserts and try to get it. Usually if it has the magazine, it might double the value of it. So Mega Man X, that is a fantastic poster featuring Sigma and all of the different bosses that you fight at the end of the levels. Then we have a Street Fighter 2 poster. A lot of people love Street Fighter, so that one's really cool. I think there's also a Mortal Kombat poster in one of these as well. F-Zero, there isn't much F-Zero content released for Nintendo anymore, so I just wanted to shout out that series because it really needs more love more often. It's kind of fallen on the wayside of Nintendo, which is really sad. I want to bring back Captain Falcon, not just in Smash, but in his own game. It's been too long. Has it been all the way since the GameCube? Maybe. I don't think there was one on the Wii, the Wii U, or the Switch yet. And then there are the posters, which just feature all of the different covers of the magazine so far to kind of, you know, just at least honor the franchise. So this is Nintendo Power 50, 50th issue for five years from the first issue to the one with Link on the cover right there, of course. That's in the 50th issue. Then in the 100th issue, they feature all of those, but it's double-sided. So some of these posters, by the way, are double-sided. And this one is, of course, for all the different ones. On the back of this one, you have like a map. This one looks like it's for Bubsy. On the back of F-Zero, you have worm I guess it looks like so it just really depends on what issue you're looking at and then the best poster one of the best posters right here which is a great overview of every single issue of Nintendo Power this has every issue on it and if a issue had two different releases sometimes it has two different pictures of it on there because uh, 285 is a really weird number to try and fit in this kind of space but they did a really good job so if you're wondering right here what covers are for everything they're all in order from the beginning all the way to the end not only that but you'll notice that some of the issues of nintendo power magazine are actually like little mini guides for a few of them so just be really careful when you're collecting realize that some of them aren't numbered their earlier issues don't have numbers on the side they just have the months on the side which is kind of interesting so try and get some of those issues of nintendo power with the posters and you'll really make your life a better time not only do they have posters inside but sometimes a lot of the times they actually have little comics in them so who remembers nestor not only nestor's funky bowling but nestor was a really popular character in the nintendo power magazine he was kind of the mascot of the magazine nestor for smash bros would be hilarious that would be unbelievable, but it'd probably just be like a me costume at some point. There's other inserts you can get, of course, in the Nintendo Power Magazine. Sometimes it came with stickers, like these stickers right here. You also sometimes could put them and they would be like iron on. So these might be iron on ability. Let's see what this says. We've created this set of temporary tattoos. So these are tattoos, that's why they're backwards, you're supposed to put them on. And some issues of Nintendo Power have cards in them that you could collect as well at the back. So if you flip through it, you might feel a spot that's a little bit thicker in the magazine and look for it and see what you've got inside. 
The advertisements in these issues was always amazing, so I pulled out my top 10 favorite backs of the Nintendo Powers. Now these are really funny, especially the early ones. Anything less than issue 100, it's hilarious. This one has a vending machine of all these Nintendo products. Can you imagine walking into a store and it says hot buttons here, but putting in money into a vending machine and either buying like a Zelda clock or a punch out hat or a Mario t-shirt out of a vending machine? That would be crazy. This is volume 24 with that back. Next up, we have volume, I think this is 33. This is actually on the back of several issues. Just look at how cool this is. So wonderfully nostalgic. I love how the stars, that's just kind of the advertising for the NES action set, which you can see right there. Then they had the Super Nintendo and they had the Game Boy. What a triple play. Nintendo gives you the power to choose. Classic power, portable power, super power. Any way you play, you'll win with Nintendo three times over with the official Nintendo seal of quality. This is so ridiculously nostalgic. All right, next up, keep your game in high gear. Here we have stand the game by maintaining your Nintendo products. With a phone number to call, Mario 3 is literally on the license plate. That's such a nice touch. This is volume 34 if you're interested. Next up, it's way cool. It literally looks like they took a Super Nintendo and they froze it. Super colors beat the competition. Way more. Power graphics drive excitement. Way beyond. Mega titles grab the gamers. Way preferred. Super NES, the only way to be way cool Nintendo. I think it's funny how they use the word mega because there was the mega drive out for the Sega Genesis. This is volume 49. Next up, these are all just in order of issue release, by the way. This is Ganon. Right here we have Get Instant Repair. He's waiting, and you obviously have the number down there in the corner, but look at how cool that art is. That alone could be a wicked poster up in someone's gaming room. This is issue 58, if you are interested. Next up, we got Samus Aran, giant picture of her on the back, get instant repair, she's waiting right there. Look at that art again, would make such a cool poster just putting this up, by the way. That would be really neat, this is 62. Then we have Get Big right here, Donkey Kong, but you're playing it on the Super Game Boy, and there, it looks like there's a, I guess, a monkey holding the cartridge, which is holding the console, or the console's holding the cartridge, which is holding a cartridge. Cartridge reception. What plays the big choice of over 350 Game Boy titles? Gets them onto your big TV screen with the power of your Super NES, and gets your big color control with your Super NES controller, Super Game Boy. It's big entertainment for a small price, $59.99, barrel out now, and get your big hairy paws on it for fun, big time. My buddy and I were just talking about trying to play games on the big screen, so I said you can use the Super Game Boy, or you can use the GameCube adapter that plugs into the bottom of the GameCube, so you can play Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, and Game Boy Advance games. This one's simple, but I just love it. Play it loud. I could, I should put this up in my room somewhere. Just play it loud. Only real old school Nintendo fans will know this slogan and have heard of this one before. By the way, that's from volume 68. The Get Big one with D Donkey Kong was 65. The Metroid one, if I didn't mention it, was 62. And the Ganon one, that one is from volume 58. Two more to talk about here. We got Get On It. This is just a ridiculous photo right here. It's dealing with a lot of Diddy Kong, it looks like. Diddy Kong's Quest, I'm not sure. We have the barrel there. We have a guy that looks absolutely crazy. This reminds me of another poster from Nintendo. Get on it, Nintendo.com, keyword NOA. So I guess they started their website at that point. The last one I just want to mention, you won't believe your eyeballs. Game Boy Pocket. This one spoke to me because I don't own a Game Boy Pocket yet. I need to get on that and get it. But love the color design. Just really, just ridiculous marketing campaign to try and get people to buy a Nintendo Game Boy Pocket. I've got to get on that. I think they convinced me. I might buy it. So that's are some, those are some of my favorite backs, old school backs to the Nintendo Power magazines. The back of Get On It was issue 74, by the way, and you won't believe your eyeballs is from issue 98. In terms of rarity and the price of the Nintendo Power magazine issues, it really does vary. 
The most expensive issues are, of course, the first issue of Nintendo Power and the last issue of Nintendo Power. And some of the issues, like issues 2 to 20, are relatively expensive because they're so old and they're not numbered correctly, so a lot of people just don't know what they have sometimes. But the people who do usually ask a lot of money for those, especially on eBay. And the last issues of Nintendo Power. So maybe issue like 281 to 285 usually have the most value. In addition to that, the issues that have posters are usually a little bit more valuable. So issue number one and issue number 285, they could cost you anywhere between 40 to maybe $100 depending on condition. And all of the other issues, you can find them for between usually $5 to $15. But if you search locally, you can probably find these for a lot less. I bought almost every single one of these issues for at least I would say between 50 cents to $3 for most of them. And the few last issues that I've been missing, I did have to pay a lot more for. So like the final issue of Nintendo Power, I think issue 283. And of course, I just got issue 198, the final issue I needed for Nintendo Power, but I bought a bulk of them. So if you buy in bulk, you save some money. I got roughly 10 issues for like $25 US, which isn't that bad, like $2 an issue. I'm not sure if these are going to go up in value over time. They are slowly increasing right now, but not everyone has nostalgia for the magazine and not everyone wants to read them. So I really want to thank my friends, one of my best friends from high school, his brother and his family. But Matt, I really want to thank you for donating a lot of your issues of Nintendo Power to me. And Mike, I'm thanking you as well because you were definitely a part of that. And anyone that I bought the magazines from or helped me get the final issues of Nintendo Power, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. So if you can find issues locally for like one or two dollars, you're doing really well. And if it has the poster inside, jackpot. You can probably sell a lot of those posters for maybe 10 bucks a piece. A lot of them on eBay are going for that much. So I don't recommend you go to eBay. I recommend you try and find them locally, maybe at a game store, maybe on Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, maybe even Instagram. You could probably ask some of your friends or a lot of the older members in your family. Maybe they remember Nintendo Power magazines. Maybe they're sitting on a gold mine somewhere in their house or at another storage location. How much is the entire collection worth? All 285 issues. Well, it just depends how much someone's willing to pay. You can probably search on eBay. There's probably a few complete collections up there. In my opinion, if you pay maybe $1,000 for the full set, that's a really good deal because you're getting all of them at once, 285 issues. That would be at like, you know, around $4 an issue or something like that. That would be fair. But I imagine that people are asking way more for a complete issue, for a complete set of Nintendo Power magazines probably a few thousand dollars if I were to put a price point on it, but why would I? I'm keeping these probably for the rest of my life. Look how much I have to read for the rest of my gaming career with my wife, with my family, with my friends at some point. Some of you might be wondering, how do I display all of these magazines? I have seen a lot of them just kind of piled with the spines face out on a Billy bookcase or just on a shelf, but I thought all of the colors of these magazines really would display well, and I really wanted to show off the Nintendo Power Collection. So first of all, I decided to put it behind the couch. Once that was decided, I went about trying to make a display for it. So what I did was I went to like a Hallmark that was closing at the time and they had a card display. So most of this is a card display, but it wasn't going to be enough for all 285 issues. So I bought two of them, one on the left and one on the right. You can kind of see the seam right down the middle there. Now, just to show you a little bit more about what these look like, which I haven't really talked about before, if I move some of stuff out of the way, this right here is the card display itself. Then I built a frame out of some two by fours and some wood to support it a little bit more solidly. And I also added at least one extra shelf to the bottom. So I had enough shelves to fit every single issue of the Nintendo Power magazines. So I just found some like little bit of plexiglass, I guess, or some plastic right there in order to display them. And I'm just kind of covering it up here with a giant World of Nintendo Fire Mario. So there's two different sides to this. Next, I decided to print this little Nintendo Power mini poster right here and put it down there myself. I used to have the little wings. Now you're playing with power. It used to have these little... Actually, I think I have them back here. 
Let me just pull one out. Yeah, they're right here. They just aren't attached and they don't look great anymore. I want to reprint this, but you can imagine this just kind of on the side right there. It was looking just like it used to look for Nintendo Power. I made these myself and I modeled them after, of course, all the lines from the cover of Nintendo Power magazines. Why not? The other side here actually has at least two shelves added to it, so you can see the wood 2x4, because this display for cards was not as tall as the other one, and I just butt them up once against each one another. Now you might be saying, the top row is not Nintendo Power Magazines, you're right! The top row are roughly 30 guides from the official Nintendo Power. So I thought they definitely belonged on this display for now. It's a little bit tall because it kind of is impeding the couch maybe a little bit, but I don't think it's that bad. Overall, I think this display works really well. It's so cool to finally see all 285 issues all together at the same time my collection is complete. It's now time to sit back, relax, read some Nintendo Power magazines, maybe a guide or two, maybe even a Super Mario Bros. 3 guide that's actually from Nintendo Power. Now you're playing with power. Thank you so much for sharing this moment with me. I have finally completed all 285 issues of Nintendo Power. Let me know as a comment below, do you read Nintendo Power? Did you have them growing up? Are you interested in collecting them? And what are your thoughts on the magazine? Because it's not really over. They started doing a podcast, which I'll also link in the description below if you're interested in listening to their Nintendo Power podcast that is released periodically at this point. Feel free to fill the like bucket, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm releasing videos on Wednesdays and on Sundays as much as possible. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to sound off in the comments below. Keep smiling while gaming. Go collect them all. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome.